Come on, let's give God praise. Even in your homes, come on, lift your hands and just give God praise. We're grateful and we're thankful for another day. Come on, let's lift him up because he's worthy. Come on, somebody, help me lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We want to welcome you to the Showers of Blessings virtual live service where we're come to give God praise and thanks. Anybody come to give him glory? We just want to give him praise and honor for all the things he has done for us. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together one more time. I will bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless together. For he 
more time, for he has done great things all over the building. Say, for he has done great things. He has done great things. We humbly submit to you and we come to the throne of your grace. Asking you first of all to wash us and cleanse us in your blood. Forgive all wrong in our lives, oh God. God, we confess every sin from birth up until now. We ask you to forgive us, oh God. Wipe our slate clean, oh God. God, we've come to lift you up. We've come to praise you. We've come to adore you, oh God. We've come to say thank you for giving us another day. Thank you for giving us another opportunity. Thank you for giving us a mind to worship you, to praise and magnify you, oh God. God, we ask you, Lord Jesus, to pour into us, oh God. Pour into us like never before, oh God. Fill us with your power. Fill us with your spirit. Fill us with your anointing right now, oh God. Have your way, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we come, Lord Jesus, because we love you like that. We appreciate all that you've done. Thank you for the doors that you've opened and the ways that you've made. Thank you for your daily provision toward us, oh God. Thank you that we have clothes on our back, shoes on our feet, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, oh God, for the activities of our limbs. Thank you, oh God, that we have in our right mind, oh God. Lord, that we have shelter, food to eat. God, thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus us for the freedom oh God to enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise God we praise you God we magnify you God we lift you up for there's power in your name there's power in your name there's healing in your name there's deliverance in your name there's gladness in your name there's happiness in your name there's joy in your name there's peace in your name and Lord we say thank you Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, that we're yet in the land of the living. God, we ask you right now. You know the condition of this world. We're looking to you for healing. Heal the land, oh God. Heal the land, oh God. Heal the land, oh God. Do it like only you can. Meet the needs of your people. Save someone on today. Deliver someone on today. Set someone free on today. Oh God, those that are viewing, oh God, via Facebook by the, or the internet or on our website. God, Lord, those that are surfing the internet, let them stop by here and get a word from you. Let some soul be touched, turned around, encouraged, and set free. In the name of Jesus, God, we ask you to remember the bereaved families, oh God. Right now, Lord, strengthen them now. In the name of Jesus, oh God, those that have lost loved ones, oh God. I'm asking you to comfort them now, oh God. Get them to seek you, oh God, and to lean and depend on you, God. Comfort now, Lord Jesus. Lift every burden now. Set them free now, God, in the name of Jesus. God, we realize and understand that you're large and in charge, and we're looking to you, oh God, for it is better for us to trust in you than to put our confidence in man. God, we're trusting you today. We're leaning on you today. We're depending on you today, oh God. We're asking you to touch our leader as he brings forth the word. Anoint him like never before, Lord Jesus. Speak through him, oh God. What his footsteps in your word, oh God. And Lord Jesus, we don't know it may be our last time, but we're going to give you praise like it's our last time. We're going to lift you up like it's our last time. Whether we're in our home, whether we're 
in our cars, whether we're on our job, whether we're walking the street, God, we're going to give you praise. Hallelujah. We're going to lift you up. Oh, God, we ask you to bind the devil on every hand. In the name of Jesus, every evil force of Satan, bind it now, oh, God. Cast it out and go, oh God, send it to the pit of hell where it belongs. Oh, God, oh, Lord Jesus, destroy all fear. Oh, God, destroy all doubt. In the name of Jesus, every evil device that the Satan, oh, God, is trying to form. You said in your word, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. God, we're looking to you, looking to you for every answer. Look at you for healing. Look at you for deliverance. Look at you for provisions. Oh God. Lord, we love you and we praise you. And God, we give you glory. We give you honor. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. I will be reading Psalm 27, verses 1 through 6. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the, is the strength of my life, and whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. May the Lord bless the hearers and doers of his holy word. Good morning and welcome to the Showers of Blessings Church of God in Christ. Our pastor is Dr. Darnell Thomas. We are delighted that you have joined us in our worship experience on this morning. If you are viewing our service live via the internet, we ask that you tag a friend, maybe even start a watch party. We want your friends and your family to be a part of this worship experience as well. Amen. Keep your Bibles close and your hearts and your minds open and ready to receive this encouraging word that will be coming from our pastor. Don't leave this experience today without receiving what God has for you. God bless you. And again, welcome. Come on, everybody, put your hands together. Come on, clap all over the building. You're in your homes, put your hands together. Breathe me, breathe me forever. 
on this morning. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord, and the humble shall be hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. I can't hear you. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. We just had Thanksgiving. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Come on, come on. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Anybody got a praise? Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Anybody love Jesus? Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Hallelujah. Let us exalt his name together. It is your time and my time to be a blessing to the house of God on this morning. We certainly cannot be God-given no matter how we try. I've searched the world over and I just couldn't find nobody that can do me like the Lord can. Do I have any witnesses in the house on this morning? Clap your hands and bless him. The Lord has certainly been good to each and every one of us. Hallelujah. Every word that he has said and everything that he has promised, the Lord has done it. Hallelujah. And he will continue to do everything that he said. And so the Lord has taken care of us and he has blessed us. He has provided for us in spite of what the world is going through. We're still blessed. Somebody say amen. Amen. For we are of a royal priesthood. Oh, yes, we are. Hallelujah. Chosen generation. Somebody Somebody say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And so our faith is in the Lord. So we're going to bless God on this morning. Certainly thank God uh, for allowing us, hallelujah, and blessing us to be able to pay, pay off this worship center, 3836 48th Avenue. Hallelujah. We thank God. 
for every giver, hallelujah, every seed that was sold to help us to accomplish that goal. But yet the vision is still going in this vision that the Lord has given Dr. Thomas, hallelujah, that vision, this vision will never die. Somebody say amen, amen, amen. And so we have so much work to do, hallelujah. But as we work, we're going to continue to make God proud. And not only has the Lord blessed us here at 3836 48th Avenue, the Lord has certainly blessed us with and enlarged our territory with 7100 Bowling Drive. Ah, yeah. Our showers of blessings, Executive Plaza. And so we're going to continue to maintain and take care of what belongs to God. If you're happy and you know it, just say amen on this morning. Uh, come on, if you're happy and you know it, come on, say amen this morning. Amen, amen. And so we love God on this morning. We want to give out of the abundance of our heart. But our online visitors, our online worshipers, hallelujah, whether you're worshiping with us via our live stream or you're worshiping with us via Facebook on this morning, we just want to again say thank you for worshiping with us. Hallelujah. But it is your time as well to be able to plant a seed into this ministry where everybody is somebody in the spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Has its way. We want to thank you in advance for everything that you do. If you would like to um, mail in your contribution, you're certainly welcome to mail it in to our physical address at 3836 48th Avenue, Sacramento, California, 95823. And if you feel like taking a drive, please don't hesitate. Come on and drive by. Showers of blessings. Come by. We have a deacon staff that is out in the lobby ready and happy to serve you. Hallelujah. On our website, our live stream, www.showersofblessingscogic.org, there's a donate button that you can click on. That will take you to a very safe place where you too can be a part of our worship and giving. Thank you so much again in advance for everything that you do. I believe we're ready to give. Let's stand all over the building. If you had legs to walk in here on this morning, that God gave gave you oxygen and breath in your body, please stand all over the building. Those of you ATM credit card, my right, your left, you're welcome to give the ATM a credit card on this morning. Let's lift our gifts all over the building. Come on, if you don't have anything to give at all, this is a good time for you to lift your wrist by faith. Hallelujah, been there, done that, and God has blessed me. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you this morning for your loving kindness. We thank you, oh God, because you have blessed us exceedingly and abundantly above all that we could ever ask or even think of and therefore we are happy and we are glad. God we thank you oh God because you look beyond our faults and you meet every one of our needs because you just love us like that and God we just want to say thank you. So here we are oh God submitting our tithes, our offers, our seeds unto you. We ask you to bless every household that's given bless them 30, 60 and 100 fold and for those that would like to give and have nothing to give at all. God we ask you as they lift their wrists by faith that you would bless them that they may be a seed so on the next time. Now God as we give us, we plant our seeds on this morning we still declare and decree as one body and one family in Christ that we shall never be broke again come on say it like you mean it we shall never be broke again. No not another day in our lives. Hallelujah thank you so much thank you so much we thank God for our leader and our pastor Darnell Thomas, hallelujah. The Lord has blessed us, hallelujah, with a great leadership. Our first lady, Lady Phyllis Thomas, we thank God for them and for how they sacrificed their lives, hallelujah, to lead us, to guide us, to instruct us, hallelujah, and to cover us in prayer. Oh, we bless God on this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you for every dime, every dollar. Thank you for all the seats that you're giving on this morning. We appreciate you. Oh,
morning. Out of respect for the men of God, please stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Ah, yes. We certainly thank God for our pastor and our leader here where we are. We have one vision. We are one team with absolutely no limits. And God has given him a word to continue to lead us and guide us and instruct us. Somebody say amen. Amen. And so at this moment, we're praying for our leader He's come, as he comes to us with the word of God. It is definitely an honor to present to you none other than our pastor, our leader, Dr. Darnell Thomas. Put your hands together and bless God for him. Come on, clap your hands. We do honor God today. When I was studying this particular sermon that I'm going to try to preach today, <clears throat> I had to go back and refocus on really the God that we serve. If we're not careful, we can let the intensity and the fire that once burned intently subside and we become numb out of a routine. But he's still God. He still sits on the, on the circle of this universe and he's still in control. He has never lost his identity and who he is. Man change, but God doesn't change. So the same God that you depend on to live, move, and have your being I think he deserved another round of applause. Our eternal Father, thank you for this time you've allowed us to come to share again with each of your people. We ask now that as I stand as an ambassador for you, to speak for the oracles by which you have prescribed for us be pleased to let us preach nothing of ourselves that every word that comes from my mouth be by you only you know what we need now as I stand in the gap to speak anoint me to let the word go out with convicting power change lives revolutionize lives and bring them to the knowledge to know that you are yet in control. And we're going to give homage to you because you are the author and the finisher of our faith. And we trust in you. And things are going to get better. Thank you, sir. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. Very quickly, let me invite your attention to a subject matter that I was trying to get away from. because I was thinking about what would be good at this time. But God knows what call that needs to be sent out, what information. Oftentimes we wait to hear from certain officials in life that set at certain uh, levels that we depend on to hear. Because you normally we want to hear not from the commentators but by the one who's really in charge. And so I believe God has the last word. And since it's his world, we need to listen to him and silence every voice but his voice because our trust is in him. So he led me to this particular subject. I'm going to read some scriptures and then I'm going to try to exegete the text by 
the way he has ascribed it and what he has prescribed for us. Deuteronomy 30, 19 and 20. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death blessings and cursing therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live that thou mayest love the Lord thy God and that thou mayest obey his voice and that ye mayest cleave unto him for he is thy life and the length of thy days that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers of Abraham to Isaac and Jacob to give them. 31 the next chapter. And Moses went and spake these words unto all of Israel, and he said unto them, I am a hundred and twenty years old this day. I can no more go out and come in. Also the Lord hath said unto me, Thou shalt not go over this Jordan. Wow. Let's go back to Mm, no, that's that's fine. Let's go now to Jeremiah. Jeremiah nine one through three. Oh, that my head were waters, and my eyes a fountain of tears, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. Oh, that I had in the wilderness a lodging place of wayfaring men, that I might leave my people and go from them, for they be all adulterers and assembly of treacherous men. And they bend their tongues like their bowls for lies, but they are not diligent for the truth upon the earth, for they proceed from evil to evil, and they know not me, says the Lord. I want to use for a subject. The choice is yours. You may be seated. The President John F. Kennedy, when he ran for office of the presidency, he came up with a slogan. He said, ask not what your country can do for you, but what can I do for my country? I thought about that how people in church is not really prone to give God your all, but we want his all. So ask not what God can do for you, but what can I do for the Lord? Lifting the subject matter from Jeremiah, it is here that Jeremiah continues to express his anguish over God's rebellious people and their refusal to repent and thereby find an escape from the destruction that God is about to send upon the people. He wanted to weep 
but his pain was too deep for tears. Jeremiah said, weeping day and night for my people who is hard-hearted and realize because of their rebelliousness the impending doom that was coming upon them. Now Jeremiah's emotions that are intense and his sorrow was so heavy. These words reveal that the prophet's profound grief over the sin and the destruction of his people that came from God. Let me just pause here. Have we looked at the condition to, to see how God come to a point in our lives to where he have to now show us unequivocally that he's still in control. And then we as his saints do we long for the lost souls that's going to get caught up in this destruction? Or are we just trying to fend for ourselves and we lost the fervor to be concerned about our neighbor? Oh God. See, because we have to be set in defense of God. But God looking for somebody to plead with the people to turn and change their wives and refocus their attention toward him. But is it business as usual? And we have forgot so uh, that God has given it to us so vividly our job is to make sure that God is still glorified in this pandemic. If you can't find an answer nowhere else, we should have the answer. Jesus is the answer. But how we become so cold and callous, lethargic, and unconcerned about we are the salt of this earth. We are the light of this world. We should be the city that's set up on the hill. When they sit in darkness, they ought to be looked to you toward the light. And they should be able to follow the God that you're serving. But have our light grown dim? Have our fervor got cold? So, the impending danger was, was dealing with, they have turned their hearts away from God. He wants to be relieved of the responsibility of this irritation to where now by the prophets, his grief over their sins and the destruction that was, in, that was pending, he understood he was torn because of his loyalty toward God and his deep ties to the people. He just was in anguish and, and he just wanted to leave and go somewhere where he didn't have to deal with it or live with it. Oh God. Notice here, all his days he prayed, he loved what he was doing to warn the people of their cold heartedness and their insincere worship toward God. Their insincere worship toward God. See, they only worship him because it really wasn't sincere. They only worship God for what they can get out of God. But they didn't want to give totally over to God. Oh, oh. You know, they wanted what God had. Uh -huh, but they didn't want to give what it required to get what he had. When you love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, you have to be all in. I'm just not in it for the ride. I, I'm just not in it for the benefit. I'm in it because I really love God. I'm sincere. My love is real. Talk to me, somebody in this place. Oh. I serve him on purpose. Let me say it again. I serve God on purpose. You don't, ha you don't have to worry about me. I I'm serving God on purpose. 
I'm not serving him for no car. I'm not serving him for no house. I'm not serving him for no house. I'm not serving him in sincerity. I serve God on purpose. I, I served him because I can live. I, I serve him it was because of him. Somebody said, I'm indebted to him. He's not indebted to me. He don't owe me nothing. Because when he gave me the best he had, I'm indebted to him. So in the text, he weeped over God making Jerusalem a den of jackals and the city of Judah desolate without habitation. Jeremiah was literally sick of watching the emptiness and the godlessness and the formalities of idol worship. <sighs> we, 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 we oftentimes it's categorized as being judgmental when we confront people's insincerity. Because what you cannot do is serve God on Sunday and serve the devil on Monday. Sometimes uh, they, what they want to do, it's hard to have pure water when it's contaminated. Pure water should be pure. Your heart should be pure. It should not be contaminated. Okay, because it's then not, it's not really pure. See, when you have a pure heart toward God, uh, you can't contaminate your heart with sin and say, I really love God with all my heart. You can't. Oh, God. Okay, now. And so Jeremiah was concerned about it because there people think that they can fool God because of his long suffering. They feel like they got away. You haven't gotten away. God is having grace for you to make a choice. So here, they only strive for wisdom of man and might and power and earthly riches. And instead of delighting in the Lord and delighting in, in who he is, now notice, they should delight in the Lord and, and then what they want God is to have delight in, on them. Delight, delight with them. See, in order for you to have the light of God, you need to delight in him. And then he'll give you his heart's, your heart's delight or your heart's want. Let me fix that. In other words, if you want what God have, give him what it requires to have him. And then we have to delight in him for what God wants us to delight in. Okay, let's do this. To delight in him, you have to learn what God is delighted in. That's what I was trying to get to. See, whatever his delight is, that's my delight. Whatever God delight in, that's what we delight in. Whatever his delight is, that's what I delight in. Okay. See, the, the Lord commanded Jeremiah to remind the people of the covenant and the law which God gave on Mount Sinai, the curse to those that obeyed and the blessing that came with it, or if you didn't, uh, 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 the, the blessing that came with it. Now, do you want the curse or the blessing? Now, but it was a requirement to get the blessings, uh huh, and then it was a requirement if you're going to be cursed. And the choice was yours. Here it is. Have we ever made some choices in life and found out we made the wrong choice? And you had to suffer because of the choice that you made. And then there are some choices that you say, I'm not going to choose. But that's still a choice. 
Somebody gonna catch that. If you don't, if you choose not to make a choice, it's still a choice. Somebody gonna catch it in a minute. Because if you don't make a choice, that's a choice not to make a choice. So you suffer the consequences because you don't make a choice. Am I right about it? But I found out when God gave us his resume of either or, it makes good sense. He has laid it out. You ought to make the right choice. And then he told you what it takes to be blessed. And then he told you what it takes to be cursed. Now the choice is yours. If you choose not to give him all of you, then you're only going to get part of his blessing. If you don't praise him and give you give him your whole heart, he's not going to give you his whole blessings. It's curses or blessings. And I don't want to deal with that or do. And so therefore, when it comes to God, that or do don't work with him. He gave you his best. You ought to give him his, your best. If he gave him, if he gave you his best, you ought to give him your best. He gave his only begotten son. That was the best he had uh, that you can live. Uh, and you ought to give him everything you got because it's in him. We live, we move, and we have our being. Why don't you make Jesus uh, your choice in the text? In the text. God is so unceasing, so persistent, so persistent. But why do the people persist to refuse? Mm -hmm. To all kinds of influence, which is unstable, and they're going in the wrong direction. When God's judgment fall, he would not listen to their prayers. I said, wait a minute. God, I'm going to need some scriptures because they're not going to believe this. Whenever God's judgment falls, he will not listen to their prayers. I said, God, help me because I have some people, they're going to look at that and don't believe it. He said, go to Proverbs 1. And 22. He said, how long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning. And the fools hate knowledge. See, open to this kind of influence, heads them in the wrong direction because they're conceited, they're optimistic, and then they're ignorant to the fact. 23, he said, turn you at my reproof when I correct Turn. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you, and I will make known my words unto you. God will change your thought process if you open up to change. He say, repent. Don't just repent, but turn. That's your choice. 24, because I have called and you refuse. I have stretched out out my hand and no man recorded. See, that's a great loss of opportunity because now they are so stubborn and refusal and irrational but they will not change. He said, but ye have set at naught at all my counsel and with none of my reproof. He said, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh upon you. 27, when your fear cometh upon you as, as desolation and your dest and destruction cometh as a whirlwind, when in distress and anguish come upon you, he said, then shall thy call upon me, but I will not answer. That's the 28th verse. Read it. It's in the text. I said, God, don't. He said, no, whenever I have gotten tired enough, mm-hmm, they don't think, they just think that they're going to escape. They can cry all they want to. They can spin like a top. They can roll up under the benches. 
they can put all they can put on, on this facade but I know that they heart but I gave them plenty of warning and they didn't take heed to the warning and then when I let judgment call when they call me I'm not answering them that's the 28th verse then shall they call upon me but I will not answer they shall seek me early see they can see it coming but they shall not find me. So they're rejected. And God now needs to let judgment fall. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear or the respect of God. They were none of my counsel. They despise all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. They didn't have place for me at first. And then when judgment come, all of a sudden they're gonna make space. Why do you have to wait until destruction of judgment come and all of a sudden you want him? Oh God. For the turning away of my simple shall slay them and they, the prosperity of the fool shall be destroyed. Everyone is free to make their own choice but they are not free to choose the consequences. Can I rewind? See, you are free to make your own choice, but you're not free for the consequences, to choose the consequences. We can go home on that. So when the consequences come, it's not multiple choice. See, what people don't realize, there is another side of God. And then the other side is still filled with love. But it just don't feel like it. Because while he's punishing you, if you don't die in it, that's because he still had mercy on you. Thirty-three, he said, "But who hearken unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from fear of evil. You escape the loss of suffering, sorrow, and shame. You enjoy a better life when you trust in Him." Now, Proverbs three five through eighteen: Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not to thine own understanding. In other words, you have to be fully committed to him, mind, body, soul, and spirit. Here it is. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Even in the area of every, every area of your life, you have to be let God be in control of your life. In every area of your life, you need God to be in control of your life. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord. Depart from evil. Now, you have to put away conceit. Put away uh, uh, and hold on to stuff that God don't want you to have. Uh, Sometimes you got the devil uh, tell the devil, I got to cut you loose because you hindering my blessings. Um, and I can't have you on one hand and God on the other hand. Uh, I got to cut you loose because you are a curse. Um, I can't get no help up in here. And, and you're holding up my blessings because God is just putting up with me because he hasn't killed me because he won't have no other God beside him. He got to be all or nothing at all. Come on and give God praise in this place. See, you have to, you have to honor God and let him manage your future. Somebody catch that. See, you have to give your all to God and let him manage your life. Let God manage your life. That's a, that, that, that's a subject. Let God manage your life. Yeah, yeah, I, I, and I found out he's a good manager. He said, my son despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. See, what God does, he want to give you proper strength, training and instruction. He want to give you advice. Don't detest it. Because it's good for you. See, for when for whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father the son, in whom he delighteth. See, when he, he, when he disciplines you, that's proof that he loves you. 
Uh huh. Because you have to understand, I, I, I don't, First Lady, I, can, I gotta say this. See, I don't do flowers. I don't. That's just me. Y'all find all the flowers y'all want. I don't do flowers. Because I have this thing in my head. I'm not gonna pay a hundred something dollars and they gonna rot. I'm not going to see my, my money sit up on the counter and fade away before my eyes. That's just me. They say, Pastor, don't say that. I love roses. Get your rose. Not just from me. Not from me. I'll give you some money, buy you something, whatever. I'm not doing flowers. But you have to understand, when you enjoy the flowers, the thorns come with it. See, I don't care how good life is. is You're going to have some thorny days. You got to beware of the thorns. Enjoy the rose, but don't get bit by the thorns. Come on, give God praise up in here. See, it's a happy as a man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. Jesus gives you the, uh, the money, it will give you what money can't buy. Jesus gives you something the money can't buy. Money can't buy you wisdom. I can't get no help up in here. Wisdom comes from God. See, you can have all the knowledge, but if you don't have wisdom to know how to use the knowledge, I can't get no help. You just have the knowledge. See, a lot of people know about God, but they don't have wisdom in order to live for God. It's the spirit that gives you the wisdom or the insight and the revelation uh, of the knowledge that he has imparted to you. Come on and give God praise. And so therefore, when I do it on purpose, that's a wise man. Because you made a wise choice. You made a wise decision. When you may put Jesus at the head of your life because he knows everything. It's nothing, that he, he, it's nothing in the world he doesn't know. Even in this time uh, that's panicking, causing people to, that this is nothing but God. It's getting people's attention to focus on him because he's the answer to these world's crisis. And I want you to understand, if God be for us, who can be against us? I don't feel what man can do unto me. I trust in God. Wisdom is more precious than rubies. And all the things that thou canst desire are not to be compared unto wisdom. More to be desired than anything, even earthly prizes and earthly possession is not compared to the wisdom of God. And then having wisdom to know God and then have a wisdom to live for God. And it says here, 16, you want to live a long time? He said, because let the days is in it. Is in her right hand and in her left hand riches and honor. You mean to tell me I get both? But you have to put things in perspective. In order to build a house, you got to have a foundation first. In order to build a house, you first have to have a foundation. Because if you don't have a foundation, your house will crumble. And so Jesus is our foundation. We build our lives on him. When we build our lives on him, he is a true foundation. Come on and give God praise. And then it says, her ways are the ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. For he guide us peacefully, and we would have a peaceful journey with him. Even though when we see the wind blows, we can be at peace because he controls the wind. Talk to me, somebody. He, he in control of the storms. I don't know, have you ever got caught in some bad weather and you're in the car and your windshield wipers are going but yet and see they're not going fast enough and you still can't see your way. Am I right about it? Out of all the traffic that's on the road, how did you get safely through? Somebody's going to catch that in a minute. Because you sometimes can see the road. 
Yet and still, if it was day, it wasn't dark enough to see the light or the tail lights to follow. Because some tail lights that you follow, you'll fall in a ditch. Because they can't see their way either. That's when you have to totally trust in God. So it is when life, whenever a storm come in your life, and you can't see your way. You got to learn how to trust in God. Come on, somebody. I got to keep it moving. Because I know this storm won't last always. It's an amazing it's amazing to me. After that storm, you keep on moving. All of a sudden, it stopped. And you say, and you done panic. And all of a sudden, you say, wow. But you don't remember the storm that was behind you. Because God brought you safely through. Even in life, being with him, you got to learn how to trust him, even when you can't trace him. Because I know he's going to bring me through this storm. He's going to bring me through this weather. Come on, talk to me, somebody up in here. Come on. So we come to this resolve. I'm coming home. I just wanted to remind us that we have to go back and re-examine and take a thorough evaluation not on somebody else but on our personal lives. In other words, am I doing all I can to please him? When I chose him, what did I really choose him for? Somebody gonna catch it. You don't have to tell me the truth but tell yourself the truth. See, when I chose God, I chose him because he was the best thing that could ever happen to me. All right? He's better than me than any cocaine. He's better than me than any weed. He's better than me than any psychedelic. He's better than me than any alcohol I can drink. He's better than me than anybody that called himself to try to love me. He loved me like nobody else can. Even when I was trying to find my way, doing my own thing, he kept me for this time and this purpose. I'm indebted to him. I'm, I serve God on purpose. After I have tried everything and everything failed, I decided to try me some Jesus. And he found, I found out he's my satisfying potion. Come on and give God praise in this place. Come on and give him praise in this place. If I was to call the role, if I call the leper, I said, how did you get here? He said, it was Jesus. Even when um, they had a problem at a wedding and ran out of wine. Jesus wasn't even invited, but he was there. His mother happened to be there. His mother said, Jesus, they ran out of wine. At this time, Jesus had never, ever performed a miracle before yet but at the wedding she just said do what he said he said my time haven't even came yet he said she said do what he said and walked off see if you learn how to do what he said the miracles will come. Come on, talk to me somebody. If you do what he say, he give you more than enough. If you do what he say, talk to me somebody in this place. If you just do what he say. And I shared this so many times. How is it that he told him to put some water and then uh, uh, in the back, and, and he said, now, dip it out and take it to the householder. Take it to the groom. Now, you have to understand, they got pure water in a pure vessel, dipped it with a dipper out the water, and before it got from the dipper to the sipper, it turned into wine. <laughs> before it from the dipper to the sipper, it turned into wine, and they didn't have a distillery. See, you got to trust Jesus. 
even when you don't know how you're going to do it, just remember that he can do anything. It's nothing impossible to them that believe. Come on again. Just do what he... If I would call Peter's wife's mother, how did you get healed? Jesus. If I go and talk to the disciples, remember when you was on the ship and the tempest in the sea, how did you get through that storm? They say, Jesus. The man with the palsy, how did you get healed? He said, Jesus. The woman with the 12-year affliction, what happened to you? She said, I just touched. Talk to me, somebody up in here. If I go to Jairus' house, they say, oh, well, she ain't going to make it. Oh, how did she get up? The two blind men. I couldn't see. How did you regain your sight? Jesus. The dumb and the demonic man where the dear devil was overtaking him. What happened? How, how, how did you get here? Jesus, the man with the withered hand at church. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, stretch forth your hand. In other words, his, his hand uh, was, was weak. And in other words, he couldn't use his hand. And you have to sometimes give God your weakness. And Jesus said, give me your hand. And when you put your hand in Jesus' hand, you will be made whole. Come on, all you have to do is give your weaknesses to Jesus. How did he get here? Jesus. If I call the man with the epileptic boy, how did you get here? Jesus. Uh, the self Phoenician daughter, how, how did you get here? Jesus. There was a man that had an unclean spirit. How did you get healed? Jesus. The deaf and the mute man, how, how, how did you get healed? Jesus. You know the blind man at Bethesda? How did you get healed? Jesus. Well, there was another one, blind, blind Bartimaeus. How do you get healed? Jesus. I'm trying to figure out all these people out here listening for Jesus and ain't no grocery store. How did y'all get fed? Jesus. Uh, and then the infirm woman, the man with the dropsy, the tender leopard, uh, uh, and then Marcus is here. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that got cut off. How did y'all get, how did y'all get, how did y'all come out of that? Jesus. The man that was born blind. The man that was born blind. I need, I, I need to walk through this. The man that was born blind. See, sometimes you can be born with an affliction. And you walk around all your life, you say, why me? How come I couldn't be like everybody else? Well, when it got to Jesus, the disciples say, who did sin, this man or his parents? Jesus said, neither one of them. He said, but the, that, that, the Spirit of the Lord, that the Spirit of the Lord may be manifested on him. That God be manifested in him. God be manifested through him. In other words, he was born this way for God to get the glory out of him. Here it is. When he came to Jesus, Jesus spit on the ground. He didn't take him to the optometrist. Jesus spit on the ground, made a sad. The Bible said, and he anointed his eyes with the spittle. Then told him to go wash. Now, it's a double jeopardy. Now, I'm already blind. And you sending me to the end, the wash in a pool that's at the end of town. Well, how am I going to get there? But you didn't assign nobody to carry me. See, he knew how to take a walk of faith. See, when God, Jesus, anoints you, you got to learn how to walk by faith. 
and not by sight. When he obeyed Jesus, he washed and came back sin. See, you got to learn how to trust Jesus. Now notice, hmm, how do you put a mask on a blind man with mud? He still couldn't see my imagination. Did he have a stick trying to find his way? The Bible don't say. Did he have a CNI dog? They didn't make him then. So everybody in town seeing this blind man walking. And they looking at him. Ain't that the blind boy? And they looking at him with mud in his face. See, people seeing you with mud in your face, but they don't know you're going to wash. And when he went and washed, he came back looking and seeing things he ain't never seen before. See, you got to watch how you judge people with mud in their face because you don't know that they've been with Jesus. And when he called them and they obeyed him and they watched, they can see things that they never seen before. I can't get no help up in here. They can see vision that they never had in mind because Jesus showed them a better way because of their obedience. Come on and give God praise. I was going to go to Isaiah, but I don't need to. But I do like the fact after he had given them an ultimatum. And then he had a problem. And he said, now come, let us reason together. He gives you an opportunity to get it right. That's what I love about God. He gives you an opportunity to get it right. And people become so cynical, so conceited so high-minded and say it doesn't take all of that. But what is it going to take? See, God can permit something to come up on your life and push you to the, the point to where you almost lose your life and then send a preacher to preach to you and let you know that Jesus still loves you at the nick of time. Now, that's a good time to make a choice. But why does it take all of that and for you to come to a right decision? God shouldn't have to put you to the point of death the way you make a choice with him. You ought to do it now. Remember your creator in the days of thy youth. While the evil days come not, nor the years draw now, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Your life could be more fulfilled when you catch him early. Come on and give God praise. You need God in your life early. Everyone standing. Now the choice is yours. He showed that you can have a good life or you can have a life that is short-lived with the bliss but the consequences are more severe. But I like to have a long life with peace and joy. What about you? That's really not a hard choice to make. And I share with people, and I say this so often, I had good sense when I was crazy. But that's a good choice to make. Am I right about it? Because he lays it out. I have signed, I have made agreement with some people in life and they reneged on the end of the bargain. I don't know, you, you haven't went through nothing that yet. Where people disappointed you, when they say they were going to do something and they didn't, and you invested, and now you reap the consequences of the, of the, because they reneged on it. You don't have to worry about God with that. If God make an agreement with you, he'll fulfill it. He is not, he's not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he not said it, shall he not do it? Has he not spoken it, shall he not make it good? It will come to pass. 
He don't have to lie. He don't have to cover up. He's God. You can't whoop him. You can't give him no time out. Let me say that. Let me say this and I'm going to move on. When people get mad at God and they think it, I'm going I'm to put him on hold. I ain't going to serve him. I ain't going to worship him. You're not doing him. You're doing yourself an injustice. Because he's going to be here when you come to your right senses. He don't have to conform. That's all. And so therefore, you need Christ in your life. If you really want to make a difference in your life and you decided I've been going in the wrong direction and today I want to follow Jesus, lift your hands and say, I'm, I'm going with Jesus from this day forward. I want him to be sole ruler over my life. I want him to conduct my ways. I want him to take me to wherever he wants me to go, be whoever he wants me to be. And I want to serve you with my whole heart, soul, mind, and spirit. If that is you, say, Lord, forgive me of all of my sins, even the sins of omission. You told me to do something, and I didn't do it. And I want you to forgive me of the sin of the one that I've committed. I've done some things against your will. God, I confess it, and I believe in my heart that you, got, you died for my sins, took all of my sins, and left them in the grave. And when you rose up again, you gave me a chance for a new way of life. And I believe God did that through you in order for I, that I may be saved in this world from eternal damnation and the curses that the world is coming up against. Now, God, thank you as I invite you into my life. And from this day forward, I'll commit my life to you. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Thank God for a new life. Come on and give God praise. God now is pleased because you made the right choice. And now you can, you now, 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 let me say this. You know the devil don't like you switching. It's just like an insane man lose his wife. He want to go crazy and do everything he can to try to get you back. Well, that kind of attitude, don't, nobody don't want to go back. Because you're acting crazy. There's no way to get nobody back. And Jesus said, through love and kindness have I drawn thee. Come on and give God praise. <laughs> and so that concludes our service for today. So the choices you make today, make wise choices. Stay focused. And let Jesus be the center of your attention. Amen. I know we live in a turbulent time, but I serve a God that understands all turbulence. And he can steal it, even give me peace in the midst of all of this chaos. Come on and give God praise. I just, I just wanted to talk to you today because it's the best decisions you can make in life. Amen. You may be seated. Let me do this. I have a baby dedication. I believe it's, it's the Scott's family. Are you here? The Scott family? Johnson. It's the baby. There's a lot of babies. Y'all yeah, come, come, come around here. We thank God for the village that this baby has. Amen. Amen.